Hey, what's up, Logic fans? It's Ash. We're going to cover section 2.1 of the text today. Uh, we're going to hit the truth tables, all right? And we're going to define how to build the truth tables, um, what the truth tables are for the five main logical connectives, and how to apply them. This is so important that you should not move on at all until you have mastered this completely. In fact, if you're trying to ace your logic course, you should memorize the five the truth tables for the five logical connectives presented in this section post haste all right let's rock all right we're going to do this by example i'm going to teach you how to build a truth table and what it is so let's suppose for the sake of argument i pull a proposition out of a hat slap it down in front of you bang there it is proposition a all right so we've got this proposition arbitrarily selected now quick question under bivalence how many different ways of assigning truth values to this one proposition A that we just randomly plucked out of the ether? Okay, how many different ways of assigning truth values to it are there under bivalence? All right, as you undoubtedly know, there are two, true and false. So it could either be true or it could be false. Okay, so uh, there, there, there are two ways to do this. It could either be true or it could be false. So it looks something like this. So here's a way of assigning a truth value to this proposition, making it true. Here's a way of assigning a truth value to this proposition, making it false. And under bivalence, that's all there is. So we have exhausted all possibilities. Now, um, we can present this in a sort of rectangular array, and that's what's known as a truth table. So we could present the exact same thing the following way. Okay, and this is how you're going to find it in the text, although it won't necessarily be color-coded. I'm just doing that here for learning purposes, and whatever textbook you're using, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so the proposition A can be true, or it can be false. All right, let's try this a slightly different way. Suppose that I picked two propositions out of a hat. Okay, suppose I picked A and B out of a hat, just as an example. Okay, how many different ways are there of assigning truth values to these two proposition. So when we just picked out A, there were two ways of doing it. How many if, you know, if there's two propositions picked out? Pause now, have a think on that. Okay, so in this case, there's four. Okay, so now I've got two propositions, all right, and uh, there's the case where they're both true. There's the case where A is true and B is false. There's the case where A is false and B is true. And there's the case where they're both false. Okay, and so there's four. And again, under bivalence, that exhausts the possibilities. No possibilities left unaccounted for. This is all of them. Okay, these are all the different ways it could be. Now, we don't know, as a matter of fact, just looking at this, whether A is true or not. We don't know, as a matter of fact, looking at this, whether B is true or not. But we can enumerate all of the different logical possibilities under bivalence. Okay, so when there was just the one proposition, there were two. When there's two propositions, there are four. How many are there if there are three propositions, A, B, and C, picked from a hat? Pause now. Okay, so if there are three propositions plucked randomly from a hat, there are eight possible ways it could be. Okay, so there's the case where they're all true. That's one of them. There's the case where they're all false. That's this one. There's the case where A is true and B is false and C is false. There's the case where A is true, B is false, but C is true. Okay, these are all eight of them. All right, so now let me ask you a slightly more general question. Okay, we saw that when we picked one out of a hat, there were two different assignments that were possible. When we picked two out of a hat, there were four assignments that were possible. And when we picked three out of a hat, there were eight. So if I picked N, okay, N hat, N out of a hat, N um, propositions out of a hat where N is greater than or equal to one, okay, uh, how many possible assignments are there? All right, so this is a little formula you're going to want to know. Pause now. Okay, so the answer is 2 to the n. Okay, so if I picked 1 out of a hat, then it was 2 to the 1 was 2 possible assignments. If I picked 2 out of a hat, it was 2 to the 2. So 2 squared, okay, is 4. And when I picked 3, it was 2 cubed, which is 8. So if I had 4 a, b, c, and d, they would be 2 to the 4 is 16. 
All right, so you're going to want to know your powers of 2. So 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, 256, 512, 1024, right, 2048, 5096, and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, it's, it's a very helpful thing for you to know, and, and computer science uh, majors will be very familiar with this. Now, importantly, okay, when you're looking at a proposition, you're going to want to count uh, propositional constants, uh, constant types, not propositional tokens. So uh, let me show you, uh, for instance, if I want to know how many rows of my truth table, how many how many different uh, assignments there are for assigning truth values uh, to the propositions occurring in this particular sentence, okay, I'm going to do uh, 2. 2 squared is going to yield 4 total, okay, and that's because I'm not counting A twice. I'm counting constant types, not tokens. There are three tokens here, but only two types, and so it's going to be 2 squared equals 4, okay? There's going to be 4, so this is a, a nice thing you're going to want to keep in mind for the work we're about to do. Finally, okay, when you're building a truth table, all right, the first thing you want is you want to determine how many rows are going to be in it. So, for example, let's suppose we're going to build a truth table for a sentence that has three uh, propositional constant types in it, okay? How many rows is that going to have? Two to the three is eight, so you're going to end up with something that looks like uh, this, for example, okay? So this is going to have um, all eight. So we're going to have eight total rows, okay? And uh, that's independently of your A, your B, and your C. So I'm going to need to add another uh, row here. Okay, so now we've got our eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you know from here how to enumerate all of the possibilities? Where well, there's a little trick, and we use it the same way throughout the entire textbook, just so there's no confusion. You can do this other ways. Here's the way that we're going to do it. It's very easy to do, okay? Once you've determined the number of rows, which is eight in this case, okay, you're going to start at the rightmost sort of one, C here, and you're going to always going to start with true, and you're going to alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, eight times. So we're going to go true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to move left. So we're going to go here. All right, so we're going to move left one, and what we're going to do is we're going to double up, and again, we're going to go eight times, okay? So instead of true, false, true, false, true, false, we're going to go true, true, false, false. That's what I mean by doubling up, true, true, false, false, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to move left again, okay? And what you're going to do now is you're going to double up from this last one. So instead of true, true, false, false, you're going to go true, 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 true. False, 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 false. Okay, and so if there were um, if there were an A, B, C, D, the D row would be going true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. The C row would be going true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false, 16 times now, okay? Until you got to the A row, which would have eight trues followed by eight falses, okay? And that's the pattern, and this enumerates all of the logical possibilities every time, and that's a systematic way you can do it, okay? So... Uh, again, this first row here, this first assignment, is the case where A, B, and C are all true. This last case here is the case where they're all false. Here's the case where A is true, or sorry, A is false, B is true, and C is true, okay, and so on. And that's just a really nice systematic way to be able to build a truth table quickly and confidently and know you haven't missed any possible assignment. Okay, so I hope you find that helpful. First, you figure out how many rows it's going to have by using your 2 to the n formula, where n is the number of propositional constant types occurring in the sentence. And then you just uh, start at the right and alternate down until you're done, and then you move left and double up, move left and double up, move left and double up. Okay, let's actually do that as an exercise to make sure we're all on the same page here for how to do this okay let's suppose you've got a sentence i'm not showing you which one just now but it's got four propositional constant types in it a b c and d so maybe it's like if if a then b and c if and only if d or something like that okay and it might have multiple instances of each of these in it but ultimately these are the four types okay you're going to construct a truth table for it the question is how do you do that all right. First thing you do is you determine how many rows are going to be in your truth table. How many rows are going to be in this particular truth table? 
That's right, two to the four is 16. Okay, so it's gonna have 16 rows, it's a bit of a beast. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you in a second. It's gonna have 16. All right, let's actually, let's just get that on the board so you can see it. Okay, so you've got your A, B, C, and D, and you're gonna have your 16 rows, which we have depicted here. Now, how are you gonna fill them in, okay? So let's start with that, how do you do it? What do you do here? All right, that's right. You're just gonna go true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. You're alternating for this first one on the far right all the way down 16 times. Then you move left and what do you do? You double up. So you go to the next, you go true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. All right, this is a fundamental skill. You need to learn this, otherwise the rest of the course is gonna be really, really tough, okay? Then you're going to double up again. True, 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 true. False, 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 false. True, 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 true. False, 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 false. 16 times. The last one's going to have eight trues and eight falses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And look at that. Voila. Here's the case where they're all true. Here's the case where they're all false, all right, and everything in between, all right? So here's the case where only A is true and everything else is false, and so on, okay? And you'll see that they're all accounted for. And again, other people have other techniques for doing this. This is, I think, a really simple and fast way to learn how to do it. Why on earth are we doing this? All right, we're building to it. Stay with me for a second here because we're about to define um, negation in terms of a truth table as well as the other logical connectives. All right, now, this is what's known as the truth table for negation. Okay, I haven't filled it in yet. We're about to. If I pick any proposition P, notice I'm using the lowercase. It could be any proposition, right? Any proposition is a substitution instance of P, right? Right, and, I mean, it's the most brute sort of atomic form that you can have, right? It, it exhibits no logical structure whatsoever. It's just a whole... Um, a whole proposition viewed that way. Any proposition P pulled out of a hat can be either true or false, right? Okay, under bivalence. So if the proposition P you pulled out of a hat is true, what's the truth value of the proposition not P? If you had pulled that whole thing out of a hat, what would its truth value be? Well, it'd be false, right? And so this is sort of defining what negation does, right? And if P, that proposition that you pulled out of a hat, whichever one it was for any proposition you pull out, if it had been false, right, then not P, that would have been true, okay? So negation sort of does the opposite, right? As you already intuitively understand, okay? It, it takes a true one and makes it false, takes a false one and makes it true. And since under bivalence, we've exhausted every possibility. P can be either true or false, and nothing else is possible, right? We haven't left anything out. Uh, this completely defines negation. It tells us how it behaves for any uh, assignment under bivalence, all right? And so we can sort of define um, negation in this way using a truth table and our propositional variables or our forms. All right, and we can do the same thing with the other logical connectives other than negation. We can do the same thing, for example, with conjunction. Let's take a look at that one. All right, if I've got two propositional constant types, P and Q, then I've got four different ways under bivalence they could be, right? So I've got the case where uh, it's true, false, true, false, and then true, true, false, false, filled in the exact same way we've been doing. So we've got the case where they're both true, the case where they're both false, the first one true, the second one false, the first one false, the second one true. And again, that exhausts the field. Now intuitively, what do you think happens to an and statement from two component parts, a left conjunct and a right conjunct, both of which are true, right? Well, it's going to take the value true. In every other case, it's going to take the value false. All right, so because a conjunction requires both. So if I said um, grass is green and gravity obeys an inverse square law, both of those are true. And so grass is green and gravity obeys an inverse square law, that's going to be true. But if I said grass is green and unicorns exist, right, that's going to be false. Okay. All right, so we're running out of time, but uh, we're going to spill this into the next video. The main thing is, is once again, I've exhausted the possibilities under bivalence, and so this completely defines conjunction for us. Catch you on the next video. Look for 2.1b.